Spire version 3.11 has been released with greater flexibility and functionality when managing price levels and future pricing changes, maintaining and entering user-defined fields, and configuring sales tax exemptions on inventory items, and more. In previous versions of Spire, each inventory item supported up to 20 specific price levels, identified by a number code and assigned to a currency. This has now been replaced by name pricing levels, so that you no longer have to remember or guess at the purpose for each level. From the Inventory top menu, open the Price Levels function to see the list of available levels. Converted data will have records for all levels that have prices assigned on inventory, or have been used on customers or sales orders. An error will appear if you attempt to delete a level that has been previously used. New price levels may also be added, so you are not limited to a maximum of 20, and existing levels can be edited. Price levels now have alphanumeric codes, and also a description to provide even more information for usage and context. The code value can be renamed if desired, which automatically replaces wherever it has been used in Spire. The currency code is now saved here, rather than through a process from the Edit Currency Codes area. When multiple levels are defined, you can assign one for each currency to be the main level, which could be considered the retail price within that currency and used when other price levels or price matrix settings don't apply. And you can add color to the unit price when this level is used on sales orders, to easily identify pricing on sales orders other than the base price when needed. Ensure that you select a color scheme different than what you're using for price matrix and promotion codes to avoid confusion. When editing an inventory item, the Prices and Units tab continues to show the price levels within the pricing section. Instead of showing 20 rows of levels whether or not they are used, now only defined price levels are displayed. You can add or delete price levels for this item as required. Price levels are still supported by unit of measure, so that if an alternate unit is highlighted above, price levels specific to this unit are displayed, either calculated from the stocking unit price or specifically defined. You might not be required to maintain any price levels here if unit prices are simply calculated from the unit conversion factor. An additional feature with this new pricing level structure is the ability of setting an effective date against the level. This allows you to accommodate future price change implementation by setting an effective date when the new price is to be used on sales orders. To set this up, highlight a price level to update and click the Change Price button to open the Edit Sell Price window. From here, for this price level, you can set a new effective date. You then determine the new unit sell price, either by simply typing it in here or calculating it based on a desired margin or markup amount, or by adjusting the price based on a percentage change. Use a positive adjustment value to increase the price, or negative value to decrease. Whatever you use, there are some built-in rounding methods, so that when a calculation determines a new price, you might round it to a more typical amount. If you change the effective date and price, this reveals an end date field, which allows you to not only create a new effective price, but also a second record that reverts the price back to what it was after the date. This could be used for defining a time-limited promotional price. Saving this will add the new price level for the effective date. As these changes are made over time, you can track historical prices and when they were valid. Because price changes typically occur over large volumes of inventory records, inventory sell prices can be listed on a separate tab for all items, for inquiry or for exporting. And a new import type for inventory sell prices has been created. Instead of importing directly to the inventory record, you now import new price level records associated with inventory. Each imported record is also related to a particular unit of measure and price level. When inventory sell prices are imported with an existing effective date for the price level, that level will be updated. When the effective date is different, a new price level will be created. When you enter a sales order and the customer is selected, the default price level is loaded if one was set. 
If the customer does not have a default level, then the main price level for the customer currency is used, even though it does not appear on the order. And as before, choosing a ship to address with a different price level will load this and update the unit price. If the price level has an associated color, it will be shown here. And picking a different unit of measure that has a price defined will continue to be loaded. If the order date is equal to or after the effective date, then the unit price for that price level will be used. Prices continue to be replaced by any price matrix or serial lot number price configurations, in the same ways in prior versions. To ensure you have the most current pricing, you can continue to use the refresh prices process, either when editing a sales order or from a selection of orders from the list grid, loading prices effective as of the order date. And you can continue to use the unit price drop-down selection to choose a different price from any level for either the customer or base currency. If the customer has a foreign currency assigned, selecting a base currency price will use the exchange rate to calculate the price in the customer's currency. User-defined fields have been available in many places throughout Spire for some time. It is now even easier to use them by supporting the ability to import values and to display UDF columns on editable grids such as sales order details. Importing user-defined fields is accessed from the usual import function on the tools menu. And there are two different ways that you can perform the process. One way is to select the import type for the desired table and at the bottom of the list you can find the defined UDF fields. The fields can be matched to columns from the import file in the same way as regular database fields. When you import a file using this type, you can populate the UDF files either on their own or with other information when you create or update records. For records that don't have an import type, or for transactions that support UDFs on both headers and details, a new import type choice has been created for user-defined fields. When this is selected, a new link table drop-down field is revealed, from which you can choose the table that contains the UDF fields of interest. Using this method requires you to know the link number to identify the desired record, such as the vendor number for vendors, or the order number for sales orders. In some cases, the link number might be a combination of multiple fields, such as the warehouse and part number for an inventory item, combined together in a single column of the import file. Matching the fields to the file works as usual, and you can only import UDF values and no other information. In previous Spire versions, you could not assign UDF fields as columns on grids that supported editing, which typically is most interesting for transaction detail lists. Now this is possible, to see or change values without requiring to open the UDF screen. When you open the list of fields that can be selected as columns for display, user-defined fields are now available for selection at the bottom of the list. This information is handled in the same way as other columns, including the ability to edit values within the list based on the data type. Validation rules configured for UDFs are also recognized. In previous Spire versions, inventory items had settings for the first four sales tax codes that could be applicable for sales orders. This configuration did not allow for determining taxes on additional sales tax codes more than four, and was inflexible for resequencing codes. This upgrade now allows you to specify any sales tax code, with exemptions clearer to understand. Existing tax configurations on inventory items will get converted to the new setup, based on the default tax codes for customers in company settings. Sales tax setup for an inventory record has been moved from the Prices and Units tab, and is now found on a new Sales Tax Exceptions tab. This list of sales tax codes can remain empty if no tax exemptions apply, and is calculated solely based on customer settings. You only need to enter something here when a tax jurisdiction is either fully exempt or partially exempt by province. To add an exception, highlight an empty row and either click the plus button or click again in the sales tax code cell. Select the desired sales tax code from the list.
and the name will be displayed for clarity. Leave the Tax Applies checkbox blank to indicate that this tax jurisdiction is not used when this item is on a sales order, or enable it to calculate tax. If provincial exemptions apply, you can select which provinces don't charge tax for this sale. These provincial rebates can now be set separately for each tax code, as compared to prior Spire versions where they are set generally for all taxes. You can also include notes in a memo field in order to track reasons for the exemption or for other purposes. It's less efficient to set the same sales tax exceptions on every record within a particular group of inventory items. In this version, you can now create similar tax exceptions on product codes, which in turn affect all associated inventory items. When you edit a product code, you'll now see a new Sales Tax Exceptions tab that works in exactly the same way as on items. Choose the Sales Tax Code, Tax Applied, and Provincial Rebates where applicable. If required, you can still set Sales Tax Exceptions on inventory items, belonging to product codes that have exemptions defined, if you need to create a tax exception to the product code exception. Another place where you can set up sales tax exemptions is on levy codes. Where levies have tax exemptions, you can edit the record to define tax codes that do not apply, replacing the four sales tax checkboxes in prior versions. The tax rebate options are not used with levies. If you have a high volume of tax exceptions for either items or product codes, you might choose to import them rather than editing individual records. There are two new import types for inventory sales taxes and inventory product code sales taxes that you can choose to accomplish this. The file for importing will need to have the inventory or product codes, the sales tax code, and any settings you want to define. When a sales order is entered for a taxable customer, the defined sales tax codes will be on the order, including any customer tax exemptions. When an item on the order and its product code both do not have any sales tax exceptions, the full amount of sales tax will be calculated. If the item or product code has an exception that either doesn't apply tax or a provincial rebate applies, then a zero amount will be calculated for the tax jurisdiction. Any levy on an item will have its tax rules used for calculation independent from the item. If you would like more information about Spire Accounting, Access the link in the description below to our homepage. Read the online manual help for additional assistance. Watch more videos from this playlist. And subscribe to the Spire YouTube channel. Thanks for watching.